Um, um, this notion of Tao are what things are and how they are. What is the rhythm of the human experience and what is the human experience? What is the material of the human experience? Now, when, then we look at the second term. We ask the question, what is du? And I've been sort of hinting at that. And that and du is this notion of insistent particularity, that, that experience is always being engaged from some particular perspective. And that's the notion of du. You know, that's the notion of, of, um, of something that is constituted by its roles and relationships. It's this heart. And, 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 and your heart is different. Your heart sits in a different set of relationships. They overlap, but as a, as a heart, as a person, um, you have your own perspective on this human life. Um, the idea is that in, in this Taoist tradition, is that if we can find a way to be in the world where we commit ourselves to appreciating the world utterly, they, I don't know how you, you say it in German, whether or not it has the same kind of, of uh, the same range of meaning, but the word appreciate in English means to recognize the magnitude, the complexity of something. The word appreciate means to be responsive to that magnitude. The word appreciate means to grow in value. Last year, my house in Honolulu appreciated $100,000. It grew in value $100,000. So, so this idea of appreciate really has to do with making meaning. As we appreciate each other, as we're responsive to each other, the cosmos grows bigger, that, that, that the cosmos becomes more meaningful. So, so the, the, the Taoist, the strategy, and we'll take a look at a, a few of these Taoist terminologies, the, the Taoist strategy is to try to take particularity on its own terms. The Taoist uses the, um, the metaphor of a mirror. But the metaphor of the mirror isn't Aristotle. It's not, it's not in my, my friend is my second self. That in my friend I can see those virtues that I aspire to. That, that the, the friend is a reflection of me, and by virtue of that, um, I understand what virtue is. That, 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 that the mirror works the opposite way in the, um, in the Chinese tradition, the mirror is an attempt to take the other entirely on their own terms. The concept of friendship is not dependent upon sameness. You know, we're not friends because we're, we're, we're a mirror of each other, you're a second self. We're friends because we're different. And that difference gives us the opportunity to grow ourselves as human beings. And so this, uh, this uh, notion of, of appreciating has to do with recognizing the bottomlessness of particularity. Not stopping off, not saying, oh, he's a German. Not saying, oh, he's an American. As though, when you know, you make these kinds of generalizations, a Chinese, or if we, you know, uh, an old guy, or however we want to, 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 to interrupt the appreciation of particularity, what Taoism does is it provides a vocabulary that says, let's not do that. Let's follow particularity to its bottom. Let's not make generalizations that stop the process. So, there's, there's, there's these, um, we, we can talk about this in the discussion. Um, in this Taoist uh, tradition, one of the things is the fundamental importance of your physicality. That, that, that your body is the site of your experience. And, and what we do is we, 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 we tend to separate these, these ideas and think about ourselves one way or another way. In, this, in the Taoist um, tradition, 
One definition of body reminds you of Merleau-Ponty, where Merleau-Ponty wants to talk about how you have a lived body. What you do is you have some kind of an existential life where one way of learning about a person is to read a book, but a better way to learn about what it means to be a person is to live a life. And so what you do is you live as a human being, and then you try to find language to give articulation to what it means to be human. That, the, that, that, that our persons are, are lived, and they're lived within a kind of physicality. Another kind of body is carnal. You know, we all have bones and flesh, you know, and you have a, a carnal body. Another kind of body is the body that, that interfaces with the world. Um, there's, a, there's a famous Harvard professor named Hilary Putnam, uh, philosopher, and he's a, a realist. Um, but, and, and Hillary changes across time, you know. Uh, he's got a very good book that was published in the 80s called The Human, the, uh, uh, Realism and the Human Face. Realism has to do with a mind-independent world, you know. I got my mind, and then you got a, a world out there, and then the world is independent of my mind. Putnam says that's rubbish. That, that uh, by the time you've got a mind, you've got language, and that what you do is you participate in the world to such an extent that you can't find that world out there that you could map in any intelligible way. You can't find the world. That the world and you are a collaboration, and what you do is you, is you use your mind, you use your language to interface with that world. The Taoist tradition would go beyond that. It would say that you use your body and your mind, the, your whole person, to theorize, to conceptualize, to appropriate the world. That you're out there in the world in such a way that there's no separating you and the world. And that, that the body-mind, you know, your engagement is, is, is physical and intellectual, emotional at the same time. That there's no separation there. And so this idea of body in the, in the Taoist tradition really becomes an important element, uh, an important emphasis. Now, let's just, we can just um, take a, uh, a, a quick summary. Where does meaning come from? Meaning doesn't come from something external. It comes from the roles and relationships that we live in the world. Um, philosophy and religion are not separable. That um, uh, Taoism shares a natural cosmology with the Book of Changes and with Chinese medicine. Uh, Taoism has to do with the immediate human experience, but we could call it a radical empiricism instead of an empiricism where the radical nature is the recognition that each one of us engages that world in a different way. That Taoism celebrates particularity. Um, the uh, Taoism, if you, if, you, if you think about it, what Taoism is, is, is it's an aestheticism. It says we don't rationalize the human experience. We don't reduce it to rationality. We don't reduce it to materialism. That what we have to do is we have to take, just as we have to take the whole cosmos in order to understand the heart, we have to take into account the big picture in order to understand anything within that big picture. And so it's fundamentally an aestheticism. That it says that what we're in the business of doing is we're trying, just like an artist, we're trying to get the most out of our ingredients. We're trying to, to contextualize, to live our relationships, to, 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 to contextualize those relationships in a way that optimizes the possibilities of those relationships. So it's fundamentally an aestheticism. Life as art. <clears throat> um, 